So this lecture is a continuation of typesetting and typesetting the major part of typesetting is fonts nowadays. So fonts and a type. So these are fonts, different fonts in a computer. So the text basically has two things, nature and aesthetics and visual presentation of the language and graphical symbols with visual aesthetics and the characteristics of a text, the shape, the spacing, the structure, layout, we look at all these in detail. So before all this, this calligraphy, it was handwritten. The monks used to sit in, in clusters and copy books hand with hand with a pen or a knife. And before ink pens and ball pens came along, they used to use something called a broad nib. And they had an ink pen and a feather or a brush to use, uh, they used to dip the feather in the ink and then write. And they were very expensive and uh, people are scribes. People who wrote this were called scribes. And calligraphy was a big thing where each character was taught how to do it and it had a special uh, form. And so the, the pens that are used were flat tipped so that you get a thick, if you run it horizontally, if you run it sideways, you get a thin uh, line. And if you run it at an at a, so a oval shape, you get thick to thin. And then you twist it, you get a sheriff like a this. So you can, there are many ways to write and you can look it online or look in a book how to do calligraphy. It's an art and it's still there for greeting cards and specialized stuff. But a lot of it is like automated. The advantage of calligraphy is that every character looks different, slightly different. And fonts and stuff, the M will always do the same because it's made out of the same font. Right. So the, the sentence that we use in font is the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy fox. And why do we use it? because all the characters A to Z are in this sentence and this is in Korea font and Times New Roman is this is a Times New Roman font this is the second most common font Courier was used for typewriters and Times New Roman is used for newspapers the difference is uh, the characters are on the same size I is smaller than a W because I is uh, fl uh, thinner in size and it's easier to read on the eyes because eyes don't actually read character by character read word by word and you recognize words at a time and this was used in newspapers and people found it easier to read. It took many years of uh, practice to get the fonts to be perfect. Also they have the sheriffs out here. The sheriffs are needed because the ink, the way ink bleeds, when you put a rubber stamp it won't come out exact so the ink will bleed on the sides and the way you had to cut. So there are physical limitations that are like sh show up in fonts. But with computers uh, the physical limitations have actually been removed. So let's look at a font technology. Each stored character value map to a visual display is called a glyph. And collection of glyphs is called a font. And many of the fonts are really old, like 15th century, like two, 500 years ago. So how do you get access fonts? So then basically each font is basically available on, a, on your system, whether Windows or Mac or Linux. So if you write some document and you need to include the fonts or people need to have uh, copyright to the font or they have to have bought the font because fonts are expensive to make and you need to buy them and the system will have to either install it on the system before you can use it and they vary, vary between Windows and Mac so if you make a document on Windows it may not it may look different on a Mac or vice versa so then you need to include the font shapes along when you deliver a document but the thing is like like a PDF file they use standard fonts or they substitute fonts so the file becomes really small you only need to send the text and uh, it will use the local system fonts to lay out the thing again but it may not look the way you intended it to look if you use different fonts so there are thousands of fonts available online and in your computer like Windows or Mac or whatever and the first major difference between fonts is monospace each cat has the same size and this is a courier font form designed by IBM and the proportional font is normally used in textbooks and newspapers each character occupies the amount of space required by the glyph and they are like f tightly fitted to each other in this case the computer doesn't know the it just each character is the same space so it moves one one character as it prints in this case the movement of the carriage is dependent on the size of the character and the, ca the fonts are in major categories Sheriff, the Times Roman, the, this is the Sheriff, there's a slight edge at the end of the T. Sand Sheriff is without the edges. And script, this is the curly thing. 
it's e easier uh, it looks like handwritten but it's harder to like read if the, if the print is in smaller font and decoratives you have some design around it and the symbols are special symbols in the font like pi here is a sheriff and this is a sand sheriff times roman is a sheriff font it's traditional it conveys dignified and e easy to read used for books and newspaper so let's look at others in like so for printed books you use times roman century garamond bodini godi courier garamond georgia and the sans serif fonts are plain like arial comic sans this is a windows font and newspaper headlines are in sans serif they don't have a stroke at the end of it sans means no for labels and illustrations when you're not reading like a whole sentence but you're reading few words and decorative fonts are like this joker man chiller and symbolic fonts are like wingdings and symbols like greek symbol uh, characters like omega and script fonts are used for poetry and cards greeting cards so there are many choices on a computer you have to look around and fonts have a weight or thickness or heaviness the light is thin and then medium is there and then heavy and heavy font now it doesn't matter but before you were limited by the amount of ink you could use on a printing if you had a lot of ink it would bleed out of paper and you have to balance the paper and the cost of the ink and this is rounded aerial empty bold and then the style example also the normal regular font bold italic bold italic together underline outline and small caps shadow shadow is difficult to print but it's easy on a computer it gives a shadow effect it's probably irritating on the eyes and your aerial bold 12 point 12 point is we'll get to the size of the fonts aerial italic 14 point aerial 10 point and then we have small caps everything is capital but slightly smaller in size and then of course we saw the monospace proportional and monospace in books so fonts are measured in points point is 72 to points make a inch and line spacing is measured in pica and 1 pica is equal to 12 points and books use 10 points roman reports use 12 point roman and reports are used for basically your class reports and stuff and an example is a 36 point 24 18 14 12 10 of course it may look different because of this on a power point out here and there is line spacing involved leading space between lines is called line space between this and this is a line space this is base line on which the characters are lined up this is line spacing this is one or two because there are two character difference between the two lines and is measured in points and then we have a cap height and an x height this is the height of x the base line the descender what goes below this and the ascender what goes above and why do you need to know this because you're designing a poster or something you can actually fit characters nicely and have some visual effect as in uh, some special a uh, logo or something you're making you need to know arrange characters individually instead of just using the the default type setting parameters and this is the body size and then there are many more things on the for uh, ascenders axis and for each character has all these things but only for a font designer you need to know all these things and what is kerning kerning is tightening of space between characters so what happens between w a t there's x if you put each character by in the same square boxes there's some space between w and a that can be removed so you can kern it and arrange it tightly packed a character so easy to read so even in other devanagari language you can kern like g and a matra it can be merged into g like and then they really fit together so if you unkern it each one takes exact space otherwise you, you kern it it fits in nicely easier to read so there are two kinds of layout one is metric layout which is using the numbering system and and the font sizes that this, this is one is using metric one is optical so optical is the way it looks and sometimes uh you can't really uh justify which will, which will look better batch except by looking at the, the layout so that's where it's an art it's not like a craft like you can automatically compute what looks best that's why automatically typeset documents are getting better and better but they're not as good as 
people who actually do typesetting for books and newspaper. So what is a digital font? It is a bitmap or outline. So outline fonts are like this, the TTF font. It has exact lines and a bitmap font is basically, each dot is basically 0, 1. So what happens when you scale the font, scalable font will like look the same no matter what size you take it. But as you scale a bitmap font, it will start looking square dot cell appearing. That's called aliasing problem and you'll see gray dots and it doesn't look good when you, when you zoom in on a bitmap font. And outline fonts can be scaled. So when you bit a uh, bitmap fonts will lose resolution when you scale them. And commercial fonts are Adobe Type 1 font is like this. You have points and it's like a made out of vectors and and interpolated curves between the things. So you can scale it as much as you want, it'll look the same. And basically they're called true type variety, outline fonts. Adobe type one postscript. Postscript is a type of language used in printers. You can find more stuff online about it. And in Windows, you go to Windows, Control Panel, Fonts, you'll find all your fonts out there. And then you, you can go to the character set. And there's a character set are basically the, the encoding of characters into numbers. So each character has some number. So you have from 0 to 255 for ASCII characters. ASCII is the original American standard for character ex inter exchange. So you can see all the characters. But then you can have any character in it. So this is a Windows ASCII default character set. But and then the thing is there are so many characters in the world that they made a unicode which can be 16 bit or or 32 bits and then there are all these ISO standards different ISO character sets are there and you get all kinds of characters in the thing depending on which you need so unicode is a, the standard which works with all the languages together in one single font set but the character set will be huge unless your computer has it installed so a Arial on windows comes with the, uh, in the unicode system some are unicode some are ASCII character set so what are special characters? So if you look closely at the quotes, these are straight up quotes, like the typewriter quotes, double quotes. And these are smart quotes. The close opening and closing quote dif look different. So you look at the backslash, slash and all these characters carefully. And you should be able to spot differences and use the right one for your typesetting. And what happens is ligatures are special characters which you substitute. If you have two F together, it doesn't look nice. So what they have a special character, double F together. And FF, FFI, this is FFI because what happens is it will bleed. The I and F will bleed. So what they do is they make a special ligature for it. An FFL. Otherwise, the L will get stuck to the F or something. So they have to arrange it special a font for it. Alignment. So you can see alignment is the next issue we look at it. It can be uh, center line, left align, or right align. This is just center, and this is justified. Justified is easier to read. The both the boundaries, the bo borders look. A test text on it. The spacing is somehow equally distributed in the character, so you can't. There's no one big gaps of space in the thing here. Yeah? There's a big gap space out here. So, but it takes more space, but it's easier to read in newspapers. So, Arial is one font. If you go to Windows, you can find the Arial font and look at it in different point sizes: 8, 18, 24, and all the characters are there. It says Arial Unicode Microsoft file size 23 meg. That's like a lot of or maybe 23 size uh, K KB and version 0 0.84 99 monotype corporation made a font for uh, Windows and then for computer science there's a program called Metafont designed by Knut and there's a program called LaTeX which is built on top of tech if you're really into fonts you should try the Metafont language and Met uh, Metascript uh, postscript language for this that uses based on top of meta font by is really good for computer science so there are many different programs out there basically again it's like postscript you define your fonts by points and equations and then what is the purpose of fonts they, they convey the attitude mood team examples so spring font winter font is a frosty and what should you do with a, which fonts you use? If you are writing a book or something, you should use Times font and chance and for labels or illustrations, children's book. Easier to read. And for a lot of material, you use Times Roman. And if you are just writing a novelty or some happy birthday or something, use a decorative font. And use a decorative font sparingly. Don't put everything decorative. It's hard to read. And use only large font thing. If you have a really small, it looks like small insects walking around. 
and only use script type for announcements and invitations and use the type appropriate for a message just don't use fonts uh, indiscriminately it will just look bad and don't use all uppercase it's harder to read than lowercase don't use too many typefaces don't leave too much space or too little space between types that's the end of it thank you